Hi, everybody, and welcome to Exegetically Speaking, a podcast of the friends and faculty of Wheaton College, Wheaton, Illinois, and the Lanier Theological Library in Houston, Texas. My name is David Capes, and I am the Senior Research Fellow at the Lanier Theological Library and a former dean up there in Wheaton at the School of Biblical and Theological Studies. Our purpose in these podcasts is really very simple. We want to promote the study of biblical languages, Greek, Hebrew, Aramaic, so we can read the Bible more faithfully, study it more fully, and not just read it, but to live it. Joining me today on Exegetically Speaking is Dr. Gene Green. He is Dean of Trinity International University in Florida. He's been with us before to talk about relevance theory. Go back and make sure you hear that podcast. We also talked about uh, 1 Peter, as I remember, uh, last year in Season 1 of Exegetically Speaking. But Dr. Gene Green, welcome. Well, good to see you, Dr. Capes, and great to uh, enter in this conversation with you and all the folk who are listening. It is just a great series. It's fun. It's fun. Speaking. It really is. We got a lot, really of, a lot of great listeners. I got an email this morning. I say, you guys keep doing that because I'm really enjoying it. So I always, yeah. always appreciate those little bits of, of encouragement. So uh, let's, st- let's start with a, a basic question. Who is Gene Green? Well, I'm I'm just an old teacher. You know, I started teaching scripture. I started teaching New Testament survey mm. in a little Pentecostal church in Springfield, Illinois, when I was a Christian for less than a year, wow. using Merle Tenney's introduction to the New Testament. So God called me many, many years ago at that time into the ministry, but into the ministry of teaching. And as you know, I taught uh, now a defunct seminary out in California. I taught mm. Dominican Republic and Costa Rica, spent about 13 years teaching in Latin America and then came and we worked together at Wheaton College. I was there for about 23, 24 years. And uh, now the Lord's opened up the door on the administrative side here at Trinity, Florida, but also teaching. But I, there's nothing that I love more, and I know it's the same for you, yeah. than, than teaching scripture yeah. and just kind of helping people to see Scripture's message in fresh and new ways and, and in deeper ways than they're accustomed to. Yeah, that's what this series is about, exegetically speaking. It's about opening up the text. And today we're going to open up Matthew chapter 16, a crucial text in Matthew's uh, gospel. And it, it is an important text for a lot of people, isn't it? Tell us what's going on here, Gene, in Matthew chapter 16. I mean, you you know the story, and, and all the listeners do. And uh, Jesus uh, asked a question, who do people say that I am? And they say, well, some say one of the prophets, John the Baptist, some say you're good vibrations. People <laughs> had a lot of different opinions about who Jesus was, and who do you say that I am? And you know, it's, it's significant that it's Peter, the Apostle Peter, who steps out and gives the answer, you're the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus affirms what Peter had said, that yes, Messiah. But then he goes on and he says, and you are Peter, Petros, and upon this Petra, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And, you know, we've had all the debates about whether it's Peter's confession, that is the Petra, the rock that he Mm. built upon, or whether it is Peter himself. And very often those who are Protestant want to say that it's the confession, and those Mm -hmm. who are Catholic want to say that it's Peter. And I want to say as a good old-fashioned Protestant that I think it's about Peter. (laughs) (laughs) Wait a minute, you're going against the grain there. I, I I know I am, because look what he does. And I'd like to go into relevance theory about this. I think it has some some relevance for this. Jesus topicalizes the name Peter. Uh, Peter knew he was Peter. Uh, Jesus knew he was Peter. Everyone's around uh, knows that he's Peter. But he says, but you are Peter, Petros, and upon this Petra, I'll build my church. So he wants to focus in on Peter, and Peter is the one who has just given this confession. And so... I think Jesus is pointing to the very central role that Peter has in the faith. Now, that doesn't mean that we have apostolic succession or or that we have to embrace the idea that, that the Pope is the successor of Peter. But I think it does drive us to recognizing that, as Paul said, the church is built upon the foundation of the apostles 
and the prophets and mm -hmm. Jesus Christ being the, the chief cornerstone. But Peter's role here, Dr. Capes, is so incredible. Mm -hmm. Think about it. Peter's the first disciple chosen, first to walk on, on water and sink and then be saved <laughs> by Jesus, the first to confess that Jesus is the Christ, yep. and the first to deny the Lord and be restored. Mm -hmm. uh, tell my disciples and Peter, we read about this at the end of Mark, the mm -hmm. first leader of the early church, the first one to open up a mission to the Gentiles, the first one to defend Gentile inclusion without circumcision at the Jerusalem Council. Mm. So what I'd like to say is that Peter is part of that inner circle of, tr of three, but really Peter is the rock and foundational, not just when we think about ecclesiology, but I'd like to tilt it over as I did in the book Vox Petri, A Theology of Peter, that Peter is theologically foundational. Oscar Kuhlman, in the middle of last century, in his book, Peter, uh, Disciple, Apostle, Martyr, he's got a throw a line, throwaway line in there partway through the book that Peter might be more important for our understanding mm. of Christian theology, our understanding of the atonement, than what we realize. Mm. And Peter has been, as Martin Hengel has said in his very last book, he is the underestimated apostle. And yes. I think that if Peter is really behind the Gospel of Mark, as Papias said, mm -hmm. then the first telling of the Jesus story comes through Peter. Through Peter. Exactly. Peter's incredible. Yeah. But we, we you know, we, we love Jesus. You know, we love Paul. We got yeah, a, you know, a we, zillion books on Paul. What, what about Peter? Paul, yeah, Paul has taken sort of uh, the sweet spot of our devotion in terms of preaching and teaching a lot of times. But Peter is an underestimate. I like that phrase, underestimated apostle. And we need yeah. to get up close. And you've done that in your book, Vox Petri. And we're going to talk about that on another podcast on the Stone Chapel, I hope, pretty soon. Well, we'll I look we'll be forward to, to that. It. It'll yeah. be a whole lot of fun. Thanks for being with us today to talk about Peter here at this most critical moment in the life and ministry of Jesus. Bless you, David. Thanks to Ian Rosine, Rebecca Larson, and Silvio Vasquez, who helped us produce this podcast. Thanks as well to John Lonsma, our Wheaton-based director, who makes this podcast possible. We're grateful to Phil Keggy for our music. If you want to study biblical languages, then you need to consider Wheaton College. Whether you're an undergraduate or a graduate student, we have amazing programs, our first-rate faculty, and some of the best students in the world. So go to the website, www.wheaton.edu, and look for Modern and Classical Languages. Get started today. If you have questions about this or any of our podcasts, we'd love to hear from you. If you have suggestions or questions about any passage in the Hebrew Bible or Greek New Testament, send us an email and we'll see if we can get one of our experts to weigh in on that for you. Our email is exegetically.speaking at wheaton.edu. That's exegetically.speaking at wheaton.edu. Thanks for listening.